What made it this way? What is action? What does fascinate it? This is the story of Chris Chan. On April 19th, 2020, QB Farms user Vicodin, who had previously retrieved Chris's drawing that was left at the Dejarnet Sanitarium and had also treated her to a lunch, hosted a live stream on his YouTube channel Leftover Media with Chris at an apparent studio location, arranging it like a variety talk show. Allegedly, after lengthy discussion with Chris herself, he intended to make it a recurring show with the goal of introducing Chris Chan to a new audience while also trolling any aspiring local artists who would agree to participate in the program after responding to an online advertisement and would not be notified of Vicodin's true intentions. On this first and only livestream, Charlottesville-based singer-songwriter Max Mondu answered Vicodin's ad and joined him and Chris. Hello everybody and welcome to Leftovers Tonight. Today I've assembled some of Augusta County's most talented people to discuss their art and their careers. Starting today is musician Max Mandu, uh, who is a local talent out of Charlottesville. He's going to be playing a little ditty for us, and then we'll speak with Sonichu in the body of Christine Weston Chandler. All of this coming up shortly after a, a musical uh, a song by Max Mandu. All right, Max. All right, thank you. It's a death fears. We have danced for rain, but the river's running dry. It's our worst fear, cause now every day feels more like the end times. And we've exhausted all our same old alibis. Oh, Malachi. Wow, that was really good, Max. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you very much for that. That was really good. What did you think of that? Loved it. Very tuneful. Thank you very much. It was very tuneful. <laughs> that's very, that's true. So, uh, Max, t tell me a little bit about your career. All right, for sure. Yeah. So I am uh, Max Mondu. I'm from Northern Virginia. I live here in Charlottesville now. You can look at uh, that. Oh, this one. All right. Oh, we have a caller. Caller line one. Hello, caller. Can you hear me? Um, I understand that you have uh, Christine Wilson Chandler on your show right now. Uh, no, that we actually have Sonichu in the body of Christine Weston Chandler on the show right now. Hello, hello. Hi. Um, yes. Do you have a due date for the uh, dimensional merch at this time? Yeah, not an exact due date, but it's in progress and can, and incoming. We can't take too many incoming calls. I'm just going to merge them all. <laughs> everyone can everyone can speak at the same time. Oh boy! You now this talk show really gets crazy because I put this link up on my Twitter on the tw on Mama's Twitter account. Yeah, you put it on the Twitter, so now everyone's joining. <laughs> Where is uh, Christine at this time? Uh, so did you? Yeah, Whenever yeah, Mama is in C one nine seven in a future version of this body, in my body is a future version of myself and eventually i gotta go i gotta get this body into c197 to quickville and then take it to babs con on april 10th so after college i before i started any kind of full-time thing in the u.s so i went out to south korea to teach english there a lot of calls coming in <laughs> and can we hold all calls until our musical guest finish telling his story because i'm interested in the story thanks, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yo, what am I watching? What the what the fuck is this? You're watching Augusta's number one variety show hosting talent from across the the Blue Ridge uh, region. People. I'm so confused. Where, where's Sonichu? I don't see Sonichu. Where's Sonichu. I'm right here in this body. Sonichu. Hey. Sonichu. Hey. What are you just gonna shout Sonichu? Is that all you have to say? Sonichu. <laughs> uh, hello, Chris. What's up? Am I on? Yeah, you're on. What's going on? Uh, not a whole lot. I just wanted to give some love to Guitar Bro, man. You're actually doing pretty well. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, he's really talented. 
So, uh, folks, I think it's time that we hear another uh, song here from Max oh. Mandu. Um, <laughs> something classic, you know what I mean? Sure. Well, in my mind, I've gone to Carolina. Can't you see the sunshine? Can't you just feel the moonshine? Ain't it just like a friend of mine to hit me from behind? I guess I've gone to Carolina in my mind. <laughs> what the fuck is... What about social... Oh, here, uh, uh, Christine, I mean, uh, so you, you know, this is actually a, something we should address is that we're not practicing social distancing right now. Yeah. But everybody um, should be encouraged to wash their hands, go to the safe bathroom, wash your hands, or have a bottle of hand sanitizer, and make sure you is. get 99.9% .9 off your hands of your germs. Man, we're it not. probably is a little better if you guys don't sit quite so close. Yeah, maybe I should say. scoot <laughs> over. Maybe Ow. I should scoot over. Ah. Yeah. Oh, let's play Wonderwall. Uh, okay. I'm going to take a break myself. <laughs> All right, you, you take a break, and I'll sit here with Max Mandu <laughs> as he plays Wonderwall. You can probably find him on, uh, what's your SoundCloud username, Max? SoundCloud is just Max Mondu, M-A-X-M-A-N-D-U. Wonder Wonderwall, Wonderwall. His <laughs> mic is on, but he's at the back. Oh my gosh, we have to... Saw did you? Yeah! Your mic is on, and you're in the bathroom. I can't let you do that. Oh. <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do? Can you turn it off from over here? Yeah, I'll just turn it off. Yeah, just to go back to the high school days, get that one issue ball that was part of the uh, Chaos Emerald Energy that came from the Chaotic Rainbow. Max, dude, get out of there, bro. Max, get out of there, run. Punch out, dude, punch out. Get out of there, bro. Get out. You're good. Get out of there. All right, Max. Well, um, I don't know. What, do you want to leave? I feel like I don't quite as fit well in what you're trying to do with the show. So Yeah, but I like sharing, I like the, I like sharing the spotlight, you know. All right, thanks, guys. Do you want to stay on? Uh, I can stay on a while longer, yeah. Right, you want to stay on, and we'll send Max home? Ow. Max, feel free to take the pizza with you. That's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thanks. Hey, uh, I just want to say I really hope Max got paid for that appearance. He is getting paid for the appearance. Thank you. He's getting paid for the okay. appearance. <laughs> Man, I got hardcore secondhand embarrassment that entire time. So, Wasn't that the point? <laughs> Max is a fucking legend. Love that guy. Max is a legend. Let's hear another round of applause for Max. Max is a, a freaking trooper. I thought he was going to run out of here. But he did all right. Yep, he did. He did all right. Where do you plan on living after Bob dies? This is my sponsor right now. Just... You know, <sighs> you want to know what my, my answer to that is? You're going to live here. <laughs> You're going to live here. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> Hi, wanted to? Yeah. When you wash your hands, do you take all that stuff off your hands and wrists first, or? Well, when I am wear when I'm wearing the gloves, I I do wash my hands with soap and water. But when I'm wearing the gloves, when I'm out and about, I use the hand sanitizer on the gloves. Uh, on the on the gloves and you can on show the fingers. How you do that. I mean, you did it over there. I didn't see it, but I saw it. Yeah. You put the on the on the gloves. So he sanitize uh, sanitizes the gloves. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering, hi Chris, uh, what did you think of your documentary series? Yeah, I'd say I'd say decently well done, and we did watch his later, latest episode that aired recently, and I would have felt better if he had kept the albeit censored NSFW content off of that video. I mean, it's just to just you know he could talk he could talk about it. But he did not need to put the explicit videos on there, especially regrettable cake farts. Yeesh. Anyway, so but for the most part, his series is good. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your call. All right. After the stream concluded, Vicodin went to the QB farms to defend himself, denying that he was using Chris to get more attention for his channel and claimed that he intended for the show to be a so-called train wreck. He added that Max had actually gotten paid for his appearance. 
Max Mondu himself also later responded to the show via a YouTube community post, writing that the host had purposely misled him prior to the stream and that he had no prior knowledge of Christine or the format of the program. He regretted attending and not leaving sooner, but feeling more determined to continue his musical pursuits. Vicodin some time after deleted his YouTube channel. On April 24th, Sonna Chu, while allegedly possessing Christine's body, wrote on Chris's Twitter account a long account regarding Chris's feelings about My Little Pony focused creator No Whacking. Sonna Chu, I have thoughts and feelings to share right now, and I will expect hate commentary underneath, because we know you few out of the billions of remaining peoples in 1218. Anyway, I have been having to remember who I am more recently. As for Mamas, Chris Chan's, Memories flow through at times, in addition to my own. I've had to learn from myself how to differentiate which thoughts were whose. At least I know how I talk and sound, so it's not a major thing, but still annoying. With that said, I wish to mention that I have begun binging the hashtag pink blue series from hashtag no whacking on at YouTube. So far, this has been a further eye-opener and reminder of what I've witnessed with Rosie and Roberta, as well as Mama and Christine Chan, although Christine Chan's transition was more instantaneous in comparison. On that, after the s balls broke apart and became our species Megastones, C Chan, gonna shorten Christine Chan from here on, and her non-human form turned female, yet she still had the male parts in her human form. Sonachu Book 11 mentioned in the clip show, part 1. She did the thing from between her old cock and moving the spunk into her vag, and had to stay stuck in Sonachu form until Russell and Cynthia were born for a few weeks. After that, she went back to her human form and she had to go through the similar quick process that Roberta went through, but the estrogen was coming in quicker with C-Chan since her alt form was now female. And with that plot hole personally filled in, anyhow, Watching and listening to Jesse's process and events so far has reminded and made me think again. It also pinged Mama's thoughts, memories, and feelings from her body's transition so far. A number of comments I felt want to leave in supportive response, but unable to directly. Like Mama had to suffer her share of UTI moments since on the E. Estrogen. Not to mention that. Yes, Mama had become more emotional, of which she welcomed most gratefully. She has felt better and happier in being able to better address her feelings and emotions that she had previously, somewhat, identified before the HRT. Regardless, Mama remains very much more continually content and hardly depressed at all, even more so while on the E. Mama will likely summarize, write out, and talk about her own experiences personally later on. But, on to a more, I feel, important and crucial bunch of topics here. Mama's memories still has. That one PTSD moment from at BronyCon 2018. As if it was not obvious from the tweet she had made that Saturday with the shocked DJ Pwn3 image. I know the trolls identified Jesse quick enough, not to mention the witness in the vendor hall at that moment. Mama, apparently, still has the issues, although she has moved forward for the most part, and realized and understood from that incident on naming the celebs she had communicated with online as friends at that same July slash August 2018 timeframe. Oh, what an epic shot in the foot she made then. She has learned that she needed to be more cautious when talking about others online, as well as the courteous and common sense untagging others who the comment is not directly addressed to when commenting below said posts. But, yeah, since that Saturday at BronyCon 2018, Mama has been wanting to talk it out. Simple, direct, and calm, with hashtag no whacking on the reasoning for that negativity at the time. After all, Mama was a fan of his, and still is, regardless of that one heartbreaking moment. I also strongly state, in fact, that this is not at a crush, romantic or love feeling, as she had lost those urges more so while on the E herself. Not to mention that she literally hated sex, period, for a while during that bunch of shit with hashtag idea guy in 17 slash 18. Think about it, if one hated sex, even for a while, that obviously says a lot about how they feel about romance and the attraction. Also, Chris Chan is literally MARRIED and has been since March 26th, 2018. 
long before BronyCon of that same year. So, shit, yeah, Mama was never ever going to do anything in personal approach and always will keep personal space with others, unless welcomed or felt welcomed for a handshake or a simple hug. I feel that I have made that very clear here. And nobody bring up at too many games of 2018. Mama learned heavily from that as well, and needs not a reminder of that. Other moment that puts a PTSD in her memory as well. The first rule of here is that you never talk about PTSD inducing topics. Anyway, Mama's memories are pulling up that unfortunate hashtag no whacking PTSD moment recently. I feel this would be a most appropriate and very good time for Jesse to finally sort this out with Mama. It has been more than one and a half years now. I leave it up to him to manifest his method of response as soon as possible. Please, Jesse, help to settle this matter and offer good tidings between you and Mama. Thanks. Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt emojis. On April 29th, the alleged Sonichu purchased a set of artistic, custom-made, MLP-themed bottle caps. One observer questioned whether it was really Sonichu writing the post, since it sounded like what Chris would say. Sonichu replied, explaining that it was really him. Another Twitter user criticized him for spending money on supposed garbage, instead of saving money like the Chandlers were supposed to do. Sonichu wrote back that the bottle caps were created by an artist affected by the cancellations of conventions due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and so he was in fact wasting money on being helpful to others. The artist who made the bottle caps then wrote a tweet, claiming they were not aware that the products were sent to a quote-unquote person with problems, and offered a full refund if Sonichu wished to return them. On May 10th, in commemoration of Mother's Day, Twitter follower Protoman posted an illustration of Christine's mother, Barbara. Sonichu then retweeted the art and wished mothers and motherly figures a happy Mother's Day greeting. He followed up by writing of his upbringing as a Pichu in the state of Rhode Island and of the events on February 1st, 2003, when his Pikachu parents and other Pikachus were killed and ravaged by Team Rocket grunts from the Pokemon franchise and all that shit. He then wrote of Roastru's youth and her adventures with her trainer Kel and the untimely death of her mother. Also on that day, Chris Orsonichu attended the online convention arranged by BabsCon, which served as somewhat of a replacement for the convention that had been cancelled. Chris Orsonichu thanked the organizers on Twitter for their attempt at an online convention, but would have preferred an offline convention where guests could physically meet instead of lingering behind closed monitors. On May 14th, after skeptical follower Protoman claimed that they could prove Chris didn't truly believe in the dimensional merge, one of Chris's alleged spouses, the Pokemon Mewtwo, allegedly took control of her Twitter account and wrote a string of tweets defending Christine after becoming offended at the tweeter's comments. He claimed that further events showing the progression of the merge were continuously happening and that Christine's goddess powers kept growing, having overcome the weaknesses that were exploited by past trolls. On May 15th, the supposed Sonichu tweeted in frustration that no one was buying her signed complete set of custom-made Toilette Sparkles Secret Chip Fic folder cards at $550, asking for someone to purchase it. Later that same day, Chris as Sonichu livestreamed himself reacting to the second part of the My Little Pony themed animated YouTube series Red vs Blue, created by noted Brony analysts, continuing the streaming series started by Christine a month prior. Hey everybody, this is Sonichu Live coming from this house once again. And today we're doing a live stream of Analysis Anarchy Part 2, my, my reactions to the video. Yeah. So I'm just making sure everything's set up. This is my first time using the laptop. So I don't know how to do screen on screen in this thing. But at least I'm able to uh, see the video still and y'all should be able to hear it loud enough. She's upstairs. Barbara is upstairs, okay? She's upstairs, alright? Stop asking about Barbara. This is a reaction video for... TF2 Analysis Anarchy Red vs. Blue Part 2. Say, wait a minute. You there? In the suit. The suit? Didn't you used to work for us? Yes, he did! Oh, indeed. Not so. 
toot my own horn or anything, but I killed one of your best co-workers in a... I want to say... Billy? <laughs> <laughs> His name's not BillyWitchDoctor.com! ...that you want from us. I have a very difficult mission in mind. And honestly, if you can get halfway through this one in one piece... I'm I certain certainly. there will be nothing be left of the opposition. Well, thank, thank you. you. Your confidence in us is overwhelming. <laughs> On May 22nd, Sonichu posted a photo of himself in Christine's body, displaying a grape-flavored Fanta brand drink, only sold in Japan, which he received via Chris's subscription to the Tokyo Treat box service, which would send a box of assorted Japanese snacks every month. Also on that day, the alleged Sonichu hand wrote a six-page message meant for Wang Kai, a friend and enabler of Chris's, who also played the game Dungeons and Dragons with her, and allegedly convinced Chris to give him money for groceries and game-related purchases. In the letters, Sonichu wrote that Chris Chan had been increasing in her powers as a literal goddess, and like herself, Kai was also prophesized to become a god. However, he would have to control his temper, as Chris herself had trouble with her temper, which she learned to better control, best exemplified in the Christian focused video series by YouTuber Gino Samuel. He further explained that Magichan recognized that Kai was the most powerful out of all their allies, and explained in length how Magichan had foreseen many faded events, which were signs of the dimensional merge. The next day, Sonichu shared a drawing made by maker Nightvi, depicting Christine in a style reminiscent of a Disney princess, hugging Sonichu, commenting that the picture made him and Rose Chu smile. On May 25th, Chris's signed set of Twilight Sparkle's Secret Chipfic Folder cards were bought by an unknown buyer for $550, with 70% of the profits set to be divided between artists affected by the cancellation of MLP conventions. On May 29th, Sonichu revealed that Christine had received a stimulus payment meant to help relieve any financial difficulties caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Sonichu wrote that he used the money to buy an Apple iPad tablet device and took to drawing Sonichu digitally, adding that it was a frustrating experience. The following day, after watching part 38 of the YouTube series Christian A Comprehensive History, the alleged Sonichu wrote on Twitter that before watching the video, he had never known about the album Trollstas Paradise by punk band Guanj, which consisted of covers of songs recorded by Christian. Sonichu chalked the album up as a piece of literal irony. He soon afterwards posted screenshots from the segment in part 38 covering Christian's video for John Kyle, the musician who performed at Chris's half-brother Cole Smithy's wedding, writing that he found his mother's facial expressions hilarious, calling for Chris's face to be made a meme. On June 2nd, Sonichu wrote a tweet thread on how his mother Christine had been trolled and bullied in the past, but reflected that she recently learned to see everyone's true intentions. He noted that YouTuber Dylan Thomas and artist Ben Saint were leeching off of her success and misfortune for their own personal gain, but had remained kind to them since those creators were part of faded events she was supposed to witness. He closed by promising to publicly list Chris's worst offenders, which would include the administrator of the QB Farms, Null. On June 12th, Sonichu went to Twitter to ask YouTuber Count Dankula, who had interviewed Christine in the past, to direct message him regarding a so-called local guardian, possibly referencing the local guardian and consultant's social worker service available in the UK. It is unknown whether a conversation between the two took place. Also on that day, Sonichu livestreamed his reaction to the third part of Red vs. Blue. We're going to be watching Red vs. Blue Part 3 in just a few minutes, about 10 minutes. And fortunately, I'll be able to do a little video on video on this iPad, but I was I that one side of it out with, look at all these stickers, huh? That's fun. And what's on the bottom? I mean, look, a high, look like a yearbook or something. I do believe this will work for picture in picture. Again, the actual video that we point on the laptop right here might not sync up with what's shown on the iPad here. And this is your basic 32 gig iPad Pro 7th gen. I'll eventually get a higher capacity model. You're speaking with Sonichu. Sonichu, I'm zapping it up right here. While I was not coming downstairs, 
anytime soon today, so chillax on that. Possibly responsible for the civil unrest. She's upstairs! Barb Ryan, Weston Chandler, is upstairs! All right, she is alive and well. Stop asking about her! She's right here. Hi, Rosie. She is not dead. Shut up. Fine. Hey, Barb! Hey, Barb! Hey, Barb, do me a favor. Would you come downstairs for a minute, please? Hey, Barb, come here. Come here. I'm on a live video stream, and people want to see you. So just come over here. Sit right here. There. Say hello to the world. Hello to the world. There's Barbara. See? She's alive and well. Give him some, give him some wisdom. Oh. Take care of your money. Don't make foolish investments. Um, anything else that's not financial? No. Not at all. Alright. How are you feeling? I feel great. Good. Oh boy, everybody's just... Alright, you can go back upstairs. Thank you, Barb. You're welcome. See you later. There. Is everybody happy now? Do you believe me? She's not a robot. Shut up. I'm pretty sure we told you all to stay put. Well, I took an initiative and made an executive decision. I'll show you that we're more than capable of effective teamwork. Wait. I'll show you? Well, I'm sure your teamwork is going swimmingly. Oh, shut up, Sorry, Ninja. Man, you man. haven't been here long enough for your comments to be valid. Hey, don't bully the newbie. Yeah, you're not as experienced as I am. Giving or receiving. <laughs> hey. On June 13th, upon watching Chris Chan A Comprehensive History, Part 39, Sonichu wrote in the comment section of the YouTube video clarifying a misconception about what caused the Chandler's house fire of 2014 and disagreeing with the mention of private emails Chris had sent to his trollsome gal pal Kim Wilson regarding his experience with tucking his penis into his anus. Hey, firstly, that door to the bathroom downstairs was unable to close at all back in 2013 and early 14. Second, why the hell would you read that personal shit about a mama with the penis thing? Oh my Chris Chan! Why did Kim have to be such a literal troll to totally expose these things when they were shared with her in the strictest confidence? Kim Wilson, if that is even your real name at this point, Mama may forgive you to an extent, but I, Sonichu, am truly insulted by this shit stunt you've pulled with her trust in betrayal over the years. On June 14th, Sonichu tweeted a list of Twitter users who had allegedly talked badly of Chris Chan over the past decade, branding them backtalkers, as he had previously promised, intending for Chris Chan followers to negatively target the aforementioned haters. He noted that more lists would be published in the future. Six days later, Christine's Patreon account began supporting artist Fluffy TG, subscribing to her highest $5 per month tier. The next day, after watching the first episode of the My Little Pony series, Pony Life, the supposed Sonichu posted on Twitter a photo of Christine's face, pulling an extended frown to signify his displeasure at watching the cartoon, captioning the photo that the show was confirmed to be deity-level awful. On July 1st, Christine's former love interest and occultist consultant, Jacob Sockness, tweeted about how much he loved hugs, hinting that he yearned for the embrace of Chris, the most heavenly goddess. The alleged Sonichu responded by telling him to stop his sex obsession. On July 7th, after a delay allegedly caused by the so-called events and being linked to them, Sonichu posted more lengthy lists of Twitter users who he considered backtalkers against Christine. The list included animator and YouTuber Oni NG, artist and animator Psychic Pebbles, and Matt Watson of the YouTube-based comedic duo Super Mega, due to their conceivably callous occasional references to Christery in their content. On July 13th, after Jacob Sockness announced himself ruler of Earth and representative of the Rokot alien empire to Earth, the purported Sonichu told him to stop that kind of talk, 
as he had no power over Sona Chu or Christine, who had been saving lives, serving blessings, and doing her best for the Earths of both dimensions. Sona Chu added that none of people's deaths or other events that Sockness claimed to have influenced were his doing, and that they were instead fated to happen telling Jacob to stop talking of himself so egotistically because the dimensional merge was happening. During this time, Sona Chu, while in Christine's body, hand wrote several pages of magic spells that had to be followed in order to enact the dimensional merge. Photos of these notes were shared amongst members of the The Place Discord group, which sought to protect Chris from negative outside forces while also indulging her delusions of alternate dimensions and living original characters. The supposed Sonichu also shared with the Discord server new photos of Chris's room, displaying her array of newly purchased toys surrounding her bed, along with occultist rings of stone facing a black mirror. On July 15th, the artist Fluffy TG sent out a tweet asking her fans to guess how old she was before eventually revealing she was in her early 30s. Sonichu responded to say that her mother Christine thought the artist was roughly veering on 18 to 21 years of age, entering young adulthood, and cute enough to still get away at times. Fluffy TG soon after blocked Chris's Twitter account. On July 16th, Sonichu, using Chris's body, logged back into Christine's QB Farms account, Legendary Christorian, and started a private conversation with the site's administrator, Joshua Moon, or Null. Sonichu first came to tell Null about a supposed future battle between Chris-chan Sonichu and the demonic entity Jacoba, bringing forth the detail that Sockness had been disabled of most of his magical abilities. Moon wrote back, addressing him as Chris, letting her know that Chris and the Sonichu comics brought people a lot of joy, and that if she were in trouble, he would help her, as he had shown in the past that he was very willing to do so. Null added that he could not offer assistance or be her friend if she continued to talk as if she was Sonichu about interdimensional matters as if they were real. Sonichu wrote further of his need to tell as many people around the world as possible to pray to Christian Sonichu and share their quote-unquote Christos, a concept of unknown origin and significance. The alleged Sonichu added that he could agree to disagree with Null on some matters, and insisted that he was Sonichu, speaking through Christine's body. Null then apologized to Chris for not being able to help, but remained open to assist her in the future. Sonichu then re-insisted that Null tell everyone to pray to Christian Sonichu and share their Christos. Moon wrote back that he was not interested in Sockness's recent attempts in using Christine to get more attention on himself a statement that Sonichu refuted. Null claimed that like in past trolling sagas, there was an enemy troll and a friend troll, which may or may not be played by the same person. In this case, Null theorized that there was a friend troll behind the scenes, who may be Jacob or one of Jacob's friends, who was encouraging Chris to reach out to Null with the aim of having the admin better publicize Sockness's new trolling attempts. Sonichu rejected this idea, claiming that he came to Null under his own volition, and telepathic guidance from Mewtwo, Magichan, and Christine Chandler herself. On July 18th, Jacob posted photos of the so-called Ultimate Ritual which he created, consisting partly of dripping his own blood onto Chris's custom Twilight Sparkle's secret chipfic folder cards in an attempt to summon Sonichu, which was said to be apparently successful due to the appearance of a sulfuric scent in Sockness's room. The alleged Sonichu replied using Christine's Twitter account, writing that Jacob dripping his own blood onto the cards did not make him a blood brother to either Magichan, Sonichu, or Chris-chan, and all that did was greatly offend Sonichu. Two days later, the alleged Sonichu took part in a multi-hour group voice call over the instant messaging service Google Hangouts with members of the The Place Discord group. You may, you like, just, just, like, just as like, uh, just as Josh, you know, said to you, you brought so much, you, you, you bring, and you brought so much fucking joy to this world, and you continue to do so. That's why one of the reasons why, you know, we, you, you need to remain safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're amazing, Sonichu. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. I want nothing but the best for you. I just do like yeah. I miss my, my, I miss my speed feet. I miss. Uh, Tangible light, tangible light. I must be in the same dimension as Rosie. That's the most valuable thing. Fabulous, she's right next to me, so it's like we're we're literally so near yet so far. Uh, yeah, that's 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 really sweet. 
I wish yeah. I wish more pe- I wish more people didn't try to use didn't uh, wouldn't try to weaponize Rosa Chu against you because they know you know that's that's uh, I I, lo- I love that little couplet that you wrote you know as long as the birds tweet you shall be my heart sweet. <laughs> it was adorable. Yeah. So corny but cute. On July 29th, the enabler Helena G. Fiorenza posted a photo of the interior of a shopping mall with her illustration of Chris's version of Mary Lee Walsh superimposed on it, writing as if Walsh was encountered at the mall in person. The enabler, righteous for quick, asked Christine the goddess on the veracity of her statement. Seemingly Chris responded to state that Helena was telling the truth and that Mary Lee Walsh had crossed over to their dimension. On the final day of July, the purported Sonichu had a private conversation with a The Place member, Not, in which he recalled his dream. In it, Chris's mother, Barbara, was driving him in their car, but turned the steering wheel too suddenly, causing them to spin out of control. They then ended up at a diner where Sonichu used the ladies' restroom and saw some imagery of the private areas of quote-unquote young ladies also using the facilities. Some got their pee onto Sonichu, which left him neutral to disgusted. Sonichu proceeded to spend at least the next week updating Nott with his dreams, one of which featured coming back to Manchester High School and telling Christian's gal pal, Tiffany Gowan, how he felt about her, which then morphed into a brief conflict with a piece of Jacob Sockness. On another night, Sonichu dreamt that he returned to the Chandler's residence and saw a human figure in Chris's bedroom that he recognized as Magichan, who told him that even though he was being controlled by someone else's input, he should not let that get him down. Sonichu and human Magichan cuddled, and then Sonichu woke up from that dream while still dreaming. He was approached by a different man and woke up in dream again several times before waking up in the dream next to a baby girl, which was recently birthed by Barbara. The baby told Sonichu that she liked him before waking up for real. Toward the end of July, Proto Man held a private conversation with Sonichu over Twitter direct messaging, who managed to get Sonichu to admit that he would not try to convince anyone of the oncoming dimensional merge because everyone would experience it for themselves. Proto Man, however, continued to dismiss the merge as falsehood. Sonichu angrily defended the veracity of the merge, as it was Sonichu talking to them, allegedly literally from Dimension C197, adding that they could only know as many details of the merge at any given time as they needed to know, and that it was too complex to explain in detail. Proto Man accused Sonichu of having the capabilities to explain, though refusing to do so. Proto Man finally asked if Sonichu could accept the possibility that the merge wasn't real and that Christine didn't truly believe it, if presented with undeniable proof. Sonichu simply wrote that he wouldn't accept such a scenario, and promptly blocked Proto Man from contacting him any further. On August 6th, Chris as Sonichu recorded a video will stating on Christine's behalf how her belongings were to be divided in the event of something happening to himself or Chris. It is unclear what prompted Sonichu to record this video. Sonichu shared it with Nott, who out of concern soon after leaked it on the Quickie and Kiwi Farms. Hello, this is... Hello, this is Sonichu in the body of Mama Christine Weston Chandler Sonichu. Okay, Chris Chance Sonichu. Anyway, I am recording this as a video will my wife Rosie Rose Chu standing next to me for in the, for in the event anything happens to me and this one body that belongs to Mama Chris Chan anything happens including a very likely just vanish from this dimension this body in me and this house gets left behind and anything else that happens to transpire in this timeline before the timeline changes I wish to hereby bequeath all my remaining possess all of the remaining possessions between mine and mamas that are in in the, this household in, within the area of this temple. I relinquish all. I would relinquish all that to Megan, Kathleen, Ringo. So simply, she simply have to be sure to come over to come to help sort things out and if she and if she feels like it she can move in and help as well 
But that's a whole nother thing. That's a fan going click 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 click. The air conditioner just died out. So I have to take that as a sign. Uh, anyway, aside from that, um, but I would also like to also help out around the house who lives here in the state of Virginia. One, Kevin Fairchild. I'd like him to... Barbara, you're going to let him move in. You're going to let him move in. You're going to help you with any remaining things and artifacts within this house. And Megan, you'll have to work with him as well. He's very genuine, very kind. I believe you both will get along very well. And this will definitely work out because you know me. I'm going into C197, our alternate dimension. And I'm going to end up uh, powering up this body, unlocking its, all of its alternate forms and everything. I, You know me, I'm a little bit... This brain is so disorganized! So, body language is not exactly syncing up at times. But yeah, I want Kevin Fairchild to come and move in as well. Because Barbara's going to need as much help as possible on the event that this house, this temple, just stays behind while... If the event that I just suddenly vanish without this house and leaving it and everything else behind. And in that case also, uh, being obvious, this body would not stand by because it's one and only. It's one and only. The eyes linked to this one brain. If you only knew, camera. Zero, 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 zero. Now everybody else, the true first person perspective. So many things in my mind, so please pardon me if I seem a little bit erratic, but this is my last video will and testament on behalf of Christine Weston Chandler Sanchu, who was born as Christopher Weston Chandler to Barbara and Robert Chandler in this dimension and this timeline. I leave y'all with that. And the attorney who will handle the case and all that and helping them at all or anybody else helping them get situated with the situation and all that. So thank you.